Welcome to this three video series on mineral and soil resources. The first video, we're going to be focusing on plate tectonics and the rock cycle. Here are the learning targets. We'll be able to describe the Earth's structure. We're going to examine the characteristics of plate tectonics and plate movements. And we're going to be able to explain the rock cycle. So we'll start out with the Earth's structure. In the top right corner, you can see a diagram that shows the main layers of Earth. So these layers are separated into the crust, which includes both the continental and the oceanic crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Some characteristics that are important to us here are the fact that the crust, continental crust, tends to be granitic in composition, and the oceanic crust tends to be basaltic in composition, so that the density of the oceanic crust is higher than the density of the continental crust. This will play into our discussion of plate tectonics in a little bit. The mantle has a somewhat plastic-like characteristic. It's warm, it is po it's possible for the mantle to flow, and if you look at the diagram in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see kind of a cartoon of how mantle flow might be expressed as convection currents. So heat from Earth's interior flowing upward through the mantle and escaping out through the crust. Earth's outer core is actually molten. It's liquid. It's made of iron and sulfur primarily. And Earth's inner core is actually solid. Although it is very hot in the inner core, the pressure from all of the overlying rock material keeps it solid. So those are important things to remember about our Earth's interior structure. Some of them play into the discussion of plate tectonics. With plate tectonics, we'll be talking about three primary types of plate boundaries. They are divergent, where plates move away from each other, convergent, where plates move toward one another, and transform, where they slide past each other. So you'll notice that both divergent and convergent have a vertical component to them. Divergent magma comes up in the middle of the ocean, so we're seeing a divergent plate boundary along this ocean spreading ridge in the diagram. Convergent, where plates are moving toward one another, we're seeing this oceanic crust that was created at the divergent boundary being subducted underneath this continental crust at a boundary where those two plates are meeting, the oceanic and the continental plates are meeting, and that causes volcanic activity and it causes earthquakes. And then transport plate boundaries, such as the San Andreas Fault, where plates slide past each other. There is no vertical component here, so we have a lot of earthquakes, but there is no volcanic activity. Moving on now to talk about the locations of volcanoes. There are three common environments where volcanoes form. They form at subduction zones associated with convergent plate boundaries. They form at spreading centers associated with divergent plate boundaries. And they form at intraplate hotspots where there is a hot plume of magma pushing up through the middle of a tectonic plate. You can see the typical locations of volcanoes shown as red triangles in this diagram here. And you'll notice that those volcanoes tend to outline the plate boundaries. When we look at the materials erupted from volcanoes, we notice that they differ based on the environment, based on the composition, and the texture. With earthquakes, earthquakes are energy from Earth's interior that's released along a fault zone as seismic wave energy, and that seismic wave energy moves outward in all directions. So the actual rupture or movement happens inside the Earth at some depth, and that's called the focus. We feel that at the surface, and directly above that focus is the epicenter. As you can see from the colorful diagram here, most of those earthquakes occur along plate boundaries with very shallow earthquakes occurring down the mid-Atlantic ridge and across other spreading centers, other divergent plate boundaries around the globe. 
with progressively deeper earthquakes happening at convergent plate boundaries, where they become deeper going inward or in towards the continent from the convergent plate boundary, and also at transform boundaries like the San Andreas Fault here. The strength of earthquakes is reported as a Richter magnitude, and things that are often associated with earthquakes are things like landslides and tsunami. So moving on to thinking a little bit about the rock cycle, I'll just take you on a tour of this rock cycle diagram. And we'll start in the top left corner with some magma deep inside Earth's surface or lava at Earth's surface. That magma or that lava cools and crystallizes, and once it's cooled and crystallized, it forms an igneous rock. Igneous rocks can be broken down, they can be weathered, broken down into smaller pieces, broken down by chemical means, transported and deposited as a sediment, which may then be lithified into a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks might be heated up, put under pressure, attacked by chemically active fluids, metamorphosed into a metamorphic rock, which may in turn melt and become a magma or a lava, and so this outer cycle continues onward. But it's important to note within the cycle that any rock could be in a situation where it might melt. So it's possible for a sediment to melt directly and become an igneous rock. It's possible for an igneous rock to remelt and become a different type of igneous rock. It's possible for a metamorphic rock to be eroded and deposited as a sediment and reform as a sedimentary rock. So any of the three rock types, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary, could be converted through processes into any of the other types of rock. Okay, I think we're ready for our review of the learning targets. We talked about Earth's interior structure. We talked about the characteristics of plate tectonics, those three types of plate boundaries and we did a tour of the rock cycle. Go ahead and take your mastery check quiz, and I'll see you in class.